Today we are going to look at the, ne the Starizona Nexus uh, Coma Corrector and Focal Reducer for Fast Newtonians. This corrector can transform your F4 Newtonian into an F3 Superfast Newtonian, which is always nice, especially if, like me, you've experienced the need for speed in recent months. Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. We're going to look at the Nexus uh, 0 0.75 times reducer chroma corrector from Starizona. Full disclosure, Starizona sent this to me for free uh, along with the Hyperstar um, lens that they sent me earlier. And the Hyperstar is still my favorite setup. And uh, I've recently started using this Nexus um, chroma corrector and I haven't been able to properly test it because uh, I don't know what's happening to my mount, but it's like tracking horribly these days. I really have no idea what's happening. And uh, yeah, even with auto guiding, like it's almost impossible to uh, to get good exposures with it. So what I'm going to do to test this is simply take a couple of subframes with a color camera, OSC camera, and a UVIR cut filter when attached to this focal reducer. So first, what is this? This works with uh, fast Newtonians. Typically F4 is what it is intended for. I believe it works also for F5 Newtonians. There is, however, a limitation. First, uh, this is a two inch um, comma corrector, which means that you do need like an, a two inch eyepiece adapter um, to, to fit it in. Um, if your telescope doesn't accept two inch eyepieces in the first place. And for me, for my R200SS from Vixen here, that was the case. So I bought this two inch um, eyepiece adapter, the lowest profile that I could get. And by just screwing it into my focuser, I get the, um, the, the ability to add this Nexus reducer coma corrector by simply sliding it in and then like tightening the screws. Now I want to tighten the screws like really one after the other uh, and going back and forth between the screws so that we get the least tilt possible with the focal reducer and uh, coma corrector. Because uh, yes, if we're going to be imaging at F3, uh, it's extremely sensitive to tilt, to collimation, to everything. Which means that just like for the Hyperstar that I got, if you're a fan of perfect star shapes, uh, no coma, uh, etc., etc., uh, very fast optics like, like this are probably not for you. You're probably better off with something like a Takahashi FSQ 106 or whatever with the uh, adapted focal reducer. Still, I think this is a great alternative because it is expensive, but not that outrageously expensive, especially with compared with Vixen's own pH corrector, coma corrector, uh, which makes this telescope from f4 to f3.8 versus this Starizona one, it makes my telescope into f3, which means I don't even really need to buy like a fast Newtonian from Sharpstar, for instance, that would be f2.8. Although, the disadvantage of this corrector is that it only supports up to APS-C size sensor, which is great because this is what we're going to test it with, APS-C size. Again, my mount has been having issues, so I'm just going to take some 10 second subframes, something like that. Now, the Nexus Coma Corrector Focal Reducer is designed to be parfocal, which means that the uh, focus point of the newt when it's naked <laughs> or with the re reducer is basically at the same point. Uh, but it has a thin lip that effectively sits on top of the, um, the focuser uh, of the telescope. So that uh, little uh, thin lip here. And that means that the recommendation to make sure that your telescope is compatible with the coma corrector is to make sure that even like without the coma corrector in, uh, when your camera is 57 millimeter or even a bit more to have a bit flexibility, like 58 millimeter, let's say, above the, um, the flange of your focuser uh, with a two inch uh, eyepiece adapter in. And then if that camera is 58 millimeter or so, are 57 millimeter or so away from the flange and you can still bring it into focus, then it works fine. But I guess that typically you wouldn't have any issues with most uh, imaging Newtonians, but it's still something to uh, know about. Also, the threads at the top of this focal reducer are M48. They're not M42 or T threads. So uh, for me, because I use like an M42 imaging train overall, I had to use like an M48 to M42 adapter uh, because I wanted to use it originally with uh, monochrome 
uh, camera and filter wheel. Now, uh, here on my filter wheel, I actually have um, an arrow color camera. So I'll uh, just be like setting the filter to my luminance filter, UVAR cut filter, taking subframes, and then I'll show you what uh, the uh, result is. The back focus distance between the uh, chroma corrector and the camera sensor is just like most other reducers uh, between the flange of the uh, chroma corrector and the camera sensor within the camera, it's 55 millimeters. So that's just as usual. If you're using a pure color camera from ZW, uh, you have like the, the, the proper uh, adapters for that already. Um, and for me, um, that's uh, actually 54.5 millimeters uh, because otherwise I wasn't able to reach focus. So uh, yeah, I'm not in the ideal back focus distance. So I probably am going to show you the worst, like not the best results that you could achieve with this Coma Corrector focal reducer. And we're good to go. So I'll be using this this evening with uh, very short exposures um, and I'll show you the results once it's done. So see you then. Okay, and we're back inside, and I am looking at Pits Insight with the result of just a five second exposure in a fairly star rich area, um, not far from the star Capella. So let's have a look at this. So, this is the result. I'll, of course, put the raw frame down in the description. Really, when you're reviewing an optical item, <laughs> Uh, and it's based on a telescope that I know is well collimated because it's the R200 SS and Vixen just recalibrated it for me. This kind of like single raw file is probably the best way to judge the optics. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, I unfortunately could not keep the exact proper back focus for the camera because with my particular telescope, uh, the focuser would then not reach, reach focus. So I'm slightly off by maybe 0 0.5, perhaps even more millimeters because of the filter, the lumens filter that I have inside. And when we look at this, at first glance, it looks fine. If we look at the center of the frame, uh, we see like decent, uh, what I would call decent results. There's a bit maybe of chroma around some of the stars, very, very limited. Um, so this is perfectly fine. And up to a size of, let's say, um, a one inch sensor, I'd say there's like no obvious problems. Now, when we go towards the corners, then we see um, stars getting elongated. Uh, but I cannot say for sure that this is the fault of the uh, focal reducer slash coma corrector. Uh, we can see it in all of the corners, by the way. And it would tend to imply that it's more of um, a focal, uh, of a back focus problem. And I know that I am too close and this is consistent with back focus that is too close. Uh, so I cannot say whether, you know, and this is an APS-C size sensor. So this is the, the biggest uh, sensor that is accepted by this uh, focal reducer slash coma corrector. And so what you're looking at here is the worst case scenario when you don't have the proper back focus distance. I also didn't do any kind of tilt adjustment or anything like related to this particular uh, reducer slash um, coma corrector. So yeah, now we're looking at it zoomed out. And honestly, this is what we all should be doing. Um, I really don't like pixel peeping. And so for me, even with those elongate, elongate, ugh, elongated stars at the uh, corners, I'm kind of okay with that. And the center stars are more than good enough, especially when I usually like center my targets. Um, the uh, illumination itself, it looks like, you know, it's difficult to say from just like a, a stretch, but it doesn't look too horribly wrong. Of course, I didn't do any sort of calibration on this particular frame. So here it is. Uh, the only thing I did, the Bayer screen stretch. And uh, yeah, you make your own judgment. Is this something that looks fine for you? Of course, I did autofocus as well uh, prior to taking the image. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, make your own judgment, is this good enough for you, knowing that uh, you would likely be able to get much better results because you'd be able with something like a Skywatcher uh, Newtonian to um, adjust the back focus in, because you would still be able to reach focus. Whereas for my Vixen, it's a bit of an issue. Even the lowest profile of their um, uh, two inch adapter, two inch eyepiece adapter, uh, adds I think 11 or is it 13 millimeters of uh, uh, back focus. If I had like a, a smaller edged, let's say uh, adapter that would add only like nine millimeters 
uh, 10 millimeters, I'd be golden. I'd be able to get better results. So, but that's not an issue with the Starzona side. It's really an issue with the Vixen side. Um, also to note, I ha I've had a lot of problems with my mount, so I'm kind of thinking of going like very wide, wide angle these days, just so I don't have to care about tracking issues. But there you have it. That's the Nexus uh, Star um, Comma Corrector and Reducer in a nutshell. Is it for you? I have no idea. Make your own thoughts based on the raw frame down below and what, and what I just showed. For me, I don't care about star shapes a lot. So I'm fine with that. For you, you might not be fine with that. And it's the same with Hyperstar. Hyperstar is the star in the corners of my APS-C sensors. They get slightly distorted. You may look at my play at ease competition um, uh, video. Yeah, I mean, for me, perfectly ac acceptable for you. I don't know. With that, that's all that I wanted to show today. As always, don't forget to subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Like, actually leave a comment. Always good. If you have experience with this focal, re focal reducer, for instance. Uh, but more important than that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.